Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this video I want to take a look at the Controls Editor. While a very powerful system, it can be a bit daunting for brand new players, so I wanted to create a little video to walk you through it. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to select the gear icon here at the top, and this will bring us to the options page. Now here on the option page, we have different tabs, and I want to make sure I'm on the controls tab for what we're going to do. Now, the uh, tab page is divided into columns. Uh, the first column here on the left is for all the different actions for the A10C, and then we have the categories, and then we have all the different input devices detected on your computer. So in my case, I have a keyboard, a joystick, and a throttle. Now, each aircraft that you have installed in DCS World can have a different uh, input configuration. So we see these by dropping down the window here, and we see all the different aircraft you have assigned in your DCS World installation. Now, some aircraft, like the A10C here, have keyboard or input configurations for both game mode and simulation mode. And this is determined by your settings in your gameplay tab and the radio button for game avionics mode. If it is checked, it will use the game input configuration. So you're going to have more arcade type uh, inputs like lock center target, lock nearest target, and so on. And if it is unchecked, it will use the simulation mode of uh, input devices. So going back to controls. Uh, the next step is setting your actions to your input devices, whether it's a keyboard, a joystick, and so on. And we're going to do that with a drop down here. And this lists all the different uh, actions that we're going to be able to assign. But here at the very top, we have what's called search. And some aircraft are going to have dozens, if not hundreds, of possible actions that you could assign to your control devices. And sometimes it could be difficult to find just that one you're looking for. But by using search, you can go ahead and bring it up, type in what you want, say flaps, and it'll show all the different control uh, actions with the word flaps in it. And um, you can do that for you know, most anything in the game. Now coming down, we'll see we have um, uh, an input or a category for all. These are all the different possible actions for, say, the A10C. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. But to make it more manageable, then we divided those into categories. So you have uh, autopilot, uh, CDU, uh, panels, electrical, uh, and you name it. Uh, but probably one of the most handy ones is called HOTAS. So when you have aircraft like the A10C or the Hornet, uh, which have the uh, hands-on uh, throttle and stick, it's very handy to use this because all the different buttons, hats, and switches that are assigned to the real stick and throttle as aircraft are in this category. So for example, let's talk about actually assigning some uh, uh, controls here. So we have our gun trigger. So this is an action. And then let's say uh, we want to assign that uh, to the keyboard. So we're going to line up the action with the device and it makes the cell here. I'm going to go ahead and clear it. And let's say I want to assign the gun trigger to the keyboard to be the space bar. So I'll go ahead and I'll double click on that cell. I'll press the space bar on my keyboard and it's assigned. Now to make it a little more uh, complex, let's go ahead and clear it. And let's say I, I want to make it left shift in keyboard. So again, I'm going to double click on that cell. I'm going to add a modifier. I'm going to click in the cell press my left shift and now and for my key I'm going to go ahead and press space. Hit OK and now you can see it's left shift space. Easy as that. And it's a very similar thing to do it now with my joystick and my throttle. So right now it's uh, assigned to joystick button 6. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. I'm going to double click on that cell and I'm going to actually pull the trigger on my joystick which is button 1. I hit OK and it's assigned to button one now. Or if I wanted to make it on my throttle, again, I'll just double click on that cell on the throttle now, hit a button on my joystick, on my throttle, hit OK, and it's assigned there. So in this way, I actually have three different ways I could fire the gun if I wanted to. 
So let's come back up now and let's talk about one of the more complex aspects of this. And this is the axes command. It's what usually throws a lot of people. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this category. And the axes command is the X and Y axes for like your joystick or your Z axis for the uh, throttle. Or you can have uh, axes for your rudder, your rotaries, uh, you name it. It's not like a single button or switch. It's a, an analog control. And if you want, you can actually reassign an entire category or um, uh, column here. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and reassign my joystick axes. So I can select on a cell within this column and hit clear category, hit yes, and all of them are gone now. And I'm going to do the same thing for my throttle now and hit clear category. So with a joystick, you're going to want to certainly set up your pitch and roll. And it's very simple. So I'm going to find my pitch action. I'm going to follow it over to my joystick column, find that cell, and double click on it. And now I'm physically going to move my uh, joystick forward and back and then automatically recognize joystick Y on my uh, joystick, or axis Y, and set it. And now I'm going to do the same thing for roll. So I'm going to follow my roll action to my joystick column, double click on that cell, move my joystick left and right, and it'll recognize as axis X on my joystick. And I'll do now finally this for the uh, throttle both. So here's my action. Now I'm going to follow it over to the throttle column, find that cell, double click on it, physically move my throttle forward and back and recognized it as joystick Z on the throttle and hit OK. Now, depending on your joystick, you may have some spiking or it may be too sensitive. So what we can do is we can set up a dead zone and a curve for any of these devices as well. And to do so, we'll go ahead and let's see, we'll go to the pitch, we'll uh, select it, and then we'll press the axis tune. Now, when we do this at the very top, we have our dead zone. We can go from zero with no dead zone to 100, which is a complete dead zone. But for most people, it'll, again, depend on how good and how spiky your center point is, but usually four or five is pretty good, and um, that should suffice. And then at the curve is probably the other one people will use a lot. And right now at zero, it's a very linear, but if you wanted to be you know, maybe a little less sensitive um, uh, on the stick and have it be more sensitive towards outside center, you could put a curve in there. And for me, I usually use a curve about 19 or 20. I feel it's pretty good. And we'll do the exact same thing now for the roll. So I'll click on the cell, axis tune. I'll do a pitch of four and a curve of about 19. Now it's also very important to remember not to assign more than one action to a single axis control. If you do, you'll have a conflict, and then you'll have spurious uh, inputs from an axis command. So once you've made all your changes, then you can just go ahead and press the OK button, and that saves everything. So that's a little overview of the basics of setting up your control devices in DCS World. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.